Hi guys, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be talking about the books that I read in July. So I read six books in July and I have to say that the quality of the books that I read last month was fantastic and it was probably my best my best month in terms of star ratings because I don't think I had a single three star read um, in July. I know I had one DNF which I will talk about in a minute but overall I think I mostly read four star books and five star books. So without further ado let's just get straight in to the wrap up. So as I mentioned the DNF, let's start with that and get that out of the way. So I went to my local library and I loaned out two books and one of the books that I loaned out was The Coven. This is a relatively new release, came out start of this year I believe um, and it had a very interesting premise. It was set in a world where witchcraft is real and women are being vilified for being witches and they are being hunted by mainly uh, white insecure men um, who are very scared of these women who have a lot of power. We are introduced to this girl who I think she was called Chloe and we find out that she is a witch, she is an elemental, elementals have this immense power, they're the most powerful witches and they harness like the power from the elements, from earth, from wind, from fire, from water. Um, and she's destroyed her house, her father goes to save her and they go on the run from, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, and then we are introduced to some other female characters as well who um, have um, witchcraft abilities. I was just very annoyed by this book. I was very annoyed by the characterization of some of the characters and I was also just very annoyed by the writing style and the constant chopping and changing and don't get me wrong I love reading from different viewpoints. I really do. I think it just really enhances the story sometimes. I think it really, it can really offer a lot of insight into different characters lives and give you little bits of information that you probably wouldn't have got from just a singular perspective. But it was just, it was just very choppy and the pacing was just all over the place and I think I read about 150 pages and nothing of any significance had happened since the start when Chloe had destroyed her house and we found out what she was. Nothing had really happened since then. There was no like progression. There was nothing to keep me interested. And I just, I had to, I had to put it down. I wasn't really feeling it, which is really sad because I have heard really good things about this book. And again, the concept sounded really interesting and I think this book could have had a lot of really um, important things to say about women's rights and how women are treated in society. I feel like that's the kind of message that the author was going for, but I just, I, I didn't stick around long enough to find out unfortunately. So I, yeah, I had to let this one go. Um, I might try it again in the future who knows, I'm, I might have a change of heart and try it again, um, but at the time it just wasn't really doing anything for me unfortunately. So now that one is out of the way, let's move on to books that I read and did enjoy. So at the start of July I went away to Bournemouth for a long weekend. I did post a reading vlog actually, which you can go and watch um, up there up there somewhere um, and I read two books so the first one I read was um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I listened to the audiobook for this, I listened to about three or four hours of it on the journey to Bournemouth 
and I was just captivated straight away. We are following the life of Evelyn Hugo, who is a bit like Marilyn Monroe in this story. You know, she's an icon, a Hollywood icon, an actress. You know, people had a lot of respect for her at the time. And she enlists the help of a young journalist to write her life story, her autobiography. So we are learning about Evelyn's life, but we are also predominantly learning about her relationships and the seven husbands that she had. <laughs> and um, I really, really enjoyed this. I loved Evelyn as a character. And the main reason why I loved her so much was because, you know, she has a lot of layers. And when we first meet her, she comes across as this very suave, you know, very confident woman. You know, she's had all of this life experience and she doesn't care what anyone thinks of her. But as we get to know her, especially in her younger years, um, and as she was starting out in the industry, we learn a lot about her vulnerability. You know, she's a very fragile young woman. Uh, she gets taken advantage of. Um, and she she's very determined to get to where she wants to be so she does kind of exploit herself and she lets other people exploit her so that she can get to a position where she's happy where she wants to be you know but um we get to see that vulnerable side of her that fragility um the side of her that people don't see behind the scenes and I, I just really really liked that I thought she was very complex I thought she was very well written I thought all of the characters especially the female characters in this book were very well written and the young journalist as well Monique um, she has a connection to Evelyn Hugo which we can we we kind of know she's got a connection to her at the start of the book but it's not until later on that we find out what that connection is. I was very pleasantly surprised. I love the ending. I thought it was wrapped up really well. Um, I thought it was like the perfect ending. I just didn't love it as much as everyone else did. I gave this book four stars. Um, I, I love the audiobook and I highly recommend it. Um, I just didn't feel that emotion that a lot of people have felt. And maybe it's just me, you know, because I'm a cold-hearted bitch. <laughs> um, but still, fabulous book. This is, what is this now? This is the second book that I've read by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And it was still a delight. So I'm looking forward to checking out some more of her stuff. And then the other book that I read on my weekend away was The Island of Missing Trees. This is by Alif Shafak. So back in January, I read 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world, which I was very pleasantly surprised by. It was one of those books that I've, I'd heard really good things about, but I didn't know what it was about and I didn't think I would enjoy it just because of the genre. It's kind of literary historical fiction, um, but I really, really liked it. So I picked this one up from my library and again, I kind of went into it with an open mind because I knew that I liked the first one that I'd read by Alif Shafak. This was a really good book, absolutely stunning, a four star read. This is set in two timelines. We have the 2010s and we have um, the 1970s. And the main premise of this um, book is about family and culture and uh, love predominantly and we are following this young girl whose parents are from Cyprus and her mother was from the Turkish side of Cyprus and her father was from the Greek side of Cyprus and it teaches you a lot about the history of Cyprus and the civil war that is kind of still going on there. It's not really going on, but it's kind of still a thing over there. And Cyprus is like divided in two and you've got the Turkish side and the Greek side. And it's a period of history that I knew a little bit about just from watching some other videos online a while ago. But this book is very informative and it teaches you a lot about 
the reasons why this happened in Cyprus and what happened and the effects that it had on the locals there. And it is about these two people, this young girl's parents, who meet and fall in love and the conflicts that they face because of that, because of their differences, because she is Turkish and he is Greek. And I I loved it. I love Elif Shafak. Okay, this is only the second book that I've read by her, but already I'm just in love with this woman's writing. It is just so beautiful. And it just flows so effortlessly and it's so easy to read and so educational. You know, she teaches you about things that you don't get taught about in school or you don't get taught about in general. Um, you know, and she informs you on these on these things that are important to her. You know that she is passionate about these things. You can just tell that within her work. One of the perspectives in this book was from a fig tree, which I thought was really interesting. This fig tree is like this all-seeing eye. It sees everything, it knows everything, it's experienced a lot. Um, and it's kind of telling you the story. And I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I really recommend it. If you love historical fiction and you want to learn more about different parts of the world, then I think Alif Shafak is a good author to uh, go to because, yeah, she it's an education when reading her books. All right, so let's talk about this series here, uh, the Crazy Rich Asians series by Kevin Kwan. We're still in the four star regions, but I am gonna give this series in total a four and a half stars. We have got uh, Crazy Rich Asians and China Witch Girlfriend, which I will talk about in a minute. And then we've got Rich People Problems. So as a whole, this series in general was phenomenal. These two books here were five stars and then this one here was a four stars, hence the 4.5 rating in total for the series. Um, in Crazy Rich Asians, we are following, well, in all of these books actually, we're following a variety of different characters, but, but in this one, we are following Rachel, so she is a Chinese-American woman. She lives and works in New York City, and she has met this guy um, called Nick. And he um, offers to take her to Singapore for six weeks over the summer so that she can meet his family, get to know the country that he loves, get to spend time with him, and she agrees. But Nick didn't tell her that his family is super rich and he is one of Singapore's most illegible bachelors. And so she gets over there and she learns all of this and it is just absolute chaos from start to finish. Nick's family are nosy, they are scheming, they are dramatic. The people that his family know are all nosy and scheming and dramatic. And <laughs> it was just absolutely hilarious. And China Rich Girlfriend was the same and Rich People Problems was the same. All of these books were just absolutely hilarious. But I really enjoyed the overall, the overall arch of this series, which is about Nick and Rachel and their relationship and gaining acceptance from Nick's family and Rachel learning all of these things and the culmination of all of that in the last book. Um, I just thought it was wrapped up really well. I didn't love this one as much just because I felt like the pacing was a little bit off and also there were several characters in the series that I feel like didn't get enough airtime, didn't get enough page time and I would have liked to have known more about them. I could easily just read more books about these characters, these families, you know, about this whole world of rich Asians. I just, I loved every second of it. I've seen some people be very critical of these books and uh, be critical of how it just name drops all of these like designer brands and celebrities and whatever. But I just think, you know, you're going into a series where, you know, the characters are crazy rich 
Of course they're going to have designer brands and stuff and of course they're going to be name dropped. I mean, what did you expect? But these books just gave me so much joy, so much laughter and entertainment and I highly recommend them. I also really liked as well, I know some people find this annoying, but I really liked that these books had little footnotes. So like here, can you see? I don't know if you can see but it has like little footnotes. So um, if something is spoken in Mandarin or another language, you know, or if there's something uh, referencing um, Chinese culture or anything like that, then there's a little footnote at the bottom of the page which kind of explains what it means. And I really like that because it saved me from having to Google. Um, and also it just, it just helped me kind of understand things a little bit more and just elevated the experience. So really, really enjoyed this series. So yeah, these two books were five stars, um, but I do have another four star read that I wanna talk about as well. And the last book that I am going to talk about, I've kind of done this out of order, <laughs> um, but um, we have Sundial. This is by Catriona Ward. So you guys know, I love The Last House on Needless Street. It was one of my favourite books of last year, one of my favourite thrillers of last year. Um, it was just atmospheric and brooding and mysterious and it had me shocked and I haven't stopped thinking about it. This one was just as good. Not as good, but just as good. Um, this is about a woman called Rob. She has two daughters and a husband. She is married to a guy called Irving, questionable name. <laughs> um, and she has two daughters called Callie and Annie. Both of her kids are being a bit strange, but Callie in particular is being very strange. And uh, she and Callie have a very strained relationship. So in order to try and find out what's going on with Callie and to try and fix their relationship, um, Rob takes Callie to Sundial. So Sundial is this home that Rob grew up in with her sister um, and it's in the middle of the Mojave Desert and they get there and we are kind of learning some stuff about Rob's past and it's very shady and I can't really tell you any more than that without spoiling it but this book is about family, it is about sisters, it is about secrets, it is about um, self-discovery and it is also about loneliness. It's very atmospheric, very dark, very twisted, it's not for the faint-hearted and if you like weird stuff I think you will like this. The only reason why this book is not a five stars instead of a four stars is because of the ending. Now don't get me wrong, it wasn't a bad ending by any means. But it was very frustrating. And I'm not happy with it. If you've read it, you will probably understand what I'm referencing to. But let's just say that um, it was very abrupt and I... I'm annoyed, I'm frustrated, and I want to know more. <laughs> All right, guys, those are the books that I read in July. Absolutely fantastic quality of books. All of them pretty much four or five stars, you know. What more could a girl ask for? Um, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and also, I have been filming this on my new vlogging camera, and Already, I can tell that the quality is just so much better. So, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've talked about in today's video. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and whether you agree with me or not, because I always love to hear what you guys have to say. But also, please feel free to let me know what you think of the quality of this video now that I've got my new vlogging camera. Just feel free to let me know if it's an improvement or not. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is an improvement, but um, if you have any tips for me on how to use a Sony 
uh, what is it? I, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's a Sony vlogging camera. If you have any tips for me on how to use it and the microphone that comes with it, um, then feel free to let me know because I'm still trying to figure my way around it. I'll link it in the description below so you guys can have a look. And if you've got one, feel free to, to share any tips. Um, but yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. You can leave a cheeky thumbs up if you like this video because it really does help with my channel and you can hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you will be notified every single time I do upload and yeah, having said all of that, I will see you all in my next video very soon. Bye guys.